you been at? Let's just roll the theme song. Hey everybody, welcome to my corner. Welcome to my corner. Let's have a talk now. From Miami to California. Yeah. Check your girl out. I'm gonna give it to you straight up. That's right. That's right. Keeping it real, no things inside. Let's go. Welcome to my corner, y'all. Okay. Hey y'all, what's up? I missed y'all. Okay, so first things first, where have I been? Well, you guys, I do live in Louisiana and there was a hurricane. So I had planned to create content, but I could not get home. So basically what had happened, God came through. So basically what had happened was I had planned a trip to Florida to speak for a conference. I spoke about social media. It was actually really, really cool. Here's a clip of the conference. When it comes to social media, you cannot be in everybody else's land. Okay, I know it looks great. I know you feel like you can do what they do, but you can't. Stay in your lane. Spoke about social media and the power of social media and like creating business tips. And so while I was in Florida, before I left, they said it was a tropical storm. And shortly after I left, the tropical storm became a hurricane. And so at first it was a category one, then it became a category two, then it like spiked up. And so I was supposed to leave that Monday. Well, I didn't hit that Sunday and Louisiana had lost all power. So I was stuck. And I rescheduled my flight to come back that Friday. There was no power. I was still stuck. I couldn't go out the following Friday. No power. Still stuck. So that next week. So I was stuck in Florida for like two and a half weeks. So that's why I couldn't create content. I couldn't get back to the corner. And I was stuck at my parents' house. It was a nice little vacation. Now, next question. You're probably asking me like, why the heck are you sitting in an empty apartment? Well, guys, I'm moving. Yay, I'm moving. Yeah, I'm moving. I'm moving this weekend. Um, this has been a seven year journey and I'm no longer gonna be living in New Orleans. I'm actually gonna be moving to Georgia and I'm super duper excited. So I gotta run down the story of how this happened. Okay, so I've always, I never wanted to live in New Orleans like for my life. I never wanted to like raise kids in New Orleans, get married in New Orleans. That's not something I wanted to do. I knew that like what I wanted to do involved content creation and TV. So I needed to be in an area where I could literally advance, okay? Um, the issue was I needed a job to do that, that uh, would allow me that. So I was working in higher ed for like the past seven years I've been working in higher ed and um, it's been great, it's been wonderful. But um, ever since I started The Corner and TikTok and you and you know Instagram, I realized that like I'm passionate about creating content. Like I am excited when I'm in front of a camera getting to do this, that's what I'm excited about. So I knew that I wanted to change directions completely. I just didn't know how I was gonna do that. So. Um, at the beginning of 2021, I wrote down that I wanted to relocate, okay? I was like, I wanna relocate, I want a new job, I wanna get out of debt, this is how much I want, Jesus, this is how much I need, this is where I wanna go, can you provide this and that? And so I didn't start applying for real, for real till June. Cause like in April I had put in some applications, but like June is when I really started applying. So in June, one of my really, really good friends here, like I have some, you know, cool people that I hang out with, but like one of my riders here, she got the opportunity of a lifetime to move and do her dream job. And so like she left and I was like, oh no, I refuse to be stuck here by myself. So I began to heavily apply. I had applied for a lot of marketing positions because my degree was in communication. So I knew that I could do sales, marketing, digital marketing, because I had an internship. I knew that I could do that. And so, I began to apply for several different jobs and of course I got denied um, because I really wanted to work from home too. Like the thing was like, wherever I get the job, I knew I was gonna move to Georgia regardless. So I began to apply for different jobs and there were three different jobs that called me back for an interview, okay? So uh, the first job was like a marketing job, definitely was not what I wanted to do, didn't make any money, it was totally like not a vibe. And the second job was for an app, and then the third job was for a content creation job. Now here's the crazy thing. After I applied for the app, um, I got a call back, right? But then I had went back on Indeed and I see this content creation job and the pay was immaculate. And I was like, this has to be a scam, but I applied. And after I applied, I heard God loud and clear say, don't apply for nothing else. And I was just like, what? Like legit y'all, I don't have no job, right? I got a job, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm working for higher ed, but I want a new job. And none of the jobs that I had applied for have come through, but literally after I applied for this job, I heard God say, don't apply for anything else. Don't apply for nothing else. And so I'm like, 
Okay, so the content creation job asks me for my TikTok handle, my Instagram handle, my YouTube channel, because they basically want to see like what kind of content creator you are and if you match their brand. And so I send that information in and then I get another message saying, hey, like we need you to create a video, um, create a video and turn it in by this date. And so I still kept feeling like it was a scam. I'm just like, oh, I don't know. And so I didn't submit the video, right? And I go back into my Indeed and they're gone. Like it, the job just disappeared, okay? I, I can't see, it's gone. And so it's a Wednesday afternoon. I just got off work. I'm coming in to wash my clothes and my phone begins to ring. I don't recognize the number, but some says pick it up. So I pick it up. And the guy on the line's like, hey, I'm looking for Candace. And I'm like, yeah, this is she. He's like, yeah, so I have your resume. I'm from this company, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh my God, I thought you guys were a scam. He's like, no, we're not a scam. He's like, what happened is a lot of people thought we were a scam. So um, this is why you couldn't find us anymore. He was like, but I was able to download your resume and um, tell me a little bit about yourself. And do you mind submitting a video for the second stage of the interview? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, how fast can you create a video? I was like, give me till Saturday. I said Saturday to buy myself time, but I knew I could get a video to him the next day. So I already had an interview plan with this app that I wanted to work with possibly. And so I created the video, I submitted the video, and then I had my second interview with the app. Okay, so I didn't hear from them once I created the video, okay? And then randomly on, I think a Monday, I got an email saying, hey, interview, second, second interview, one o'clock. And so I was like, okay, great. So mind you, I had an interview with the app that week. They called me back for a third interview and I had my final, you know, initial interview with the guy from the company. So I have both interviews. I do well. Um, and, you know, I had like this whole entire time I'm applying for jobs. I was also fasting because some things only come through prayer and fasting. I'm not saying you fast to get things. I'm saying sometimes only things come through prayer and fasting. And I was watching Stephen Chandler's um he was doing, they were fasting. So I had already planned to go on a fast, but their church was fasting. So I joined them and he was doing a series on prayer. And he was saying, when you pray, okay, when you, when you pray, um, you have to pray a promise. He was like, you know, you can't just go in there asking for things. You find a scripture and you pray. So I began to pray, like the scripture I was praying for, you said, ask and you ask for anything in my name and, and you'll do it. That was my scripture that I was standing on. And so I began to ask for what I want. I was like, I want this salary. I want to work from home. I want to be able to create content so I can create content for myself and do other things. And so I was fasting. Now, I think I had interviewed with my app late July, first thing in August, right? Okay, so I have the interview. I do well. And he offers me the job. The interview was Monday. He offers me the job by Thursday. So by Thursday, like the second week of August, I had a job offer. Okay. Um, the pay was almost double of what I'm making with higher ed. I was working from home and I'm doing content creation. And so I was like, okay, great. So <laughs> I still have my uh, other interview with uh, the app. Of course I didn't get it, but it was fine because I wanted to create content. Like I wanted to create videos and that's what I do for my company. I wanted to work in a place where I could use my gifts. and. That's what I'm doing. And so I move into Georgia this weekend. That's when my apartment's pretty much empty. I came back from Florida this past weekend. I packed up my house and it's my stuff's gonna leave to Georgia today and then Saturday I'll go behind it. And so that's why I have not been here. That That's why, because like I was stuck with Ida, but also like I'm moving. So like the corner is moving, okay? And I'm pretty sure the corner will move a lot more. Like to be honest, I could see us like moving from out of my living room into a studio because that's always been the plan. So the corner is moving, I'm moving, and I'm excited for new things. Um, here's what I learned through all of this. Um, Number one, we don't pray to get things. I mean, you should have a prayer life just because you want to commune with God. But the whole entire time I was praying and asking God for his voice. That's what I was asking for. I was asking for a job, but I also wanted to hear his voice. And so I had to create space for him to, to so I could hear him. And so I was making space. And he every time he told me something about the job, like I heard, stand back and be amazed. That's what he told me at the beginning of this year. So I had applied. And like, mind y'all, the crazy thing was like, when I had applied, for those jobs, I was shook because God told me not to apply for anything else. Like I did not have, I had the job I was working at, but I didn't have a, a, a yes from any other company. And all I heard was don't apply for anything else. And I was just like, yo, what? And sometimes when you're believing God for things, 
Like, it's gonna sound real crazy, I promise you. Like, sometimes when you're believing God for things, the instructions are barbaric, they're crazy. Like, here I am believing God for a new job, and I've applied for like, maybe like 10, I got denied from like five, and then I see this one that I really want, and two that I really want, and God says, don't apply for nothing else after I apply. And it's like, but I haven't gotten a yes, so you really want me not to apply? Don't apply for another job. And literally, I had applied that Thursday, Within two weeks, I had the offer letter sitting in my email. So like, I'm not telling you this to brag about how great I am. I'm telling you this because like, what you're believing God for is literally like around the corner. You just gotta be obedient. Like, I don't know why they don't teach you that. Like, you gotta create space for God to dwell, number one. That's the first thing. So like, while I was believing God for a new job, I was, I was not being distracted. Anything that was in my way as a distraction had to move. I wasn't talking to my friends like that because I was believing for something. Like when you're believing God for something, something, something so big, you don't got time to be entertaining clowns, okay? You don't, you don't got time. So I was so focused and um, I was fasting with Destiny, I mean Union Church, excuse me. And every week Stephen Chandler preached something. And the first one was about like when prayer is the problem, talking about Daniel. Then he was like, like you got it, you can't have a prayer life without a promise. So I went and found me some promises to pray. And then he was talking about like after you get what you pray for, what's next? And so I got what I prayed for within two weeks. So I'm moving. I'm moving to Georgia. I love New Orleans. I've had some great memories here. Uh the food is amazing. I've done a lot of great work here. Um but it's time for me to move. So you guys, the corner is moving. We gonna be back in the corner when Asai gets settled. Thank y'all so much for rocking with me. Thank y'all so much for being here. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you ever need me, you know where to find me at. Peace.